I don't know what to tell you, man. I sort of feel like... Well, maybe I'm a hoob sometimes. Like, I don't get out of the van so often, but when I do, I'm always really impressed at all the goings on. With all these tiny peoples, right? Let's call them peeps. Between you and me. Sometimes they'll tell you about things that you never heard about, know how. The friends. They're kind of odd, but I kind of like that. I've got this one friend that lives with me and he collects all sorts of junk. There's this other girl I know and she's always wandering off around the world somehow. She's telling you all about it sometimes and everybody laughs. We've got this wise old hoob man. He tells us what we're supposed to be thinking about whilst we're pottering around in our big old van. And uh, every now and again, there'll be like a chorus that goes on. As always, you ask one of the five Y word questions. Nah, I'm stretching it now. But it never happened, man. Sometimes don't you feel like that? Like, I stay in my room a lot. I don't got much cause to be going out. There ain't enough time in my days anyhow, but I'm learning stuff. I've got my computer and I think of it like it's a great hoopopedia. I never told no one that. I'm documenting it, but I never give no newscast about it, man. I've got to think about production values and my house, it's a bit poxy at times. But I never feel bad. Because you're watching people. You're always finding out. Maybe they'll listen to you one time. Maybe they can't listen to you. Because they're peeps. They are just some sort of hoob somehow. What do you know? You're a hoob, right? It's your job to find out. I read some stories by a guy one time. I tried to read them, but he was a real tricky individual, this man. I had a friend and he called him Troopers. If he was not right, he was right. This guy, real small fella. This guy always had a lot to say right, and women, they really liked to hear him when he talked, even though he really said, never said anything nice about them. But he said it in a charming way. He was a real nurturing man, kind of like a mother sometimes. He really liked when he found some sensitive individual, some artist type that he could dream about, even if they'd done something real bad. He had friends and they both did some writing between the two of them. This woman, she was real poignant and insightful. She had a name which would stick in your mind like nothing else. I read her book, it's a real popular one, but I couldn't much like it. I liked all the names and so on, but it's about children, right? These kids in the story, man. They're all going around talking to each other like they aren't even kids, man. Like they're adults already and know exactly what's what about everything. It was called To Kill a Mockingbird, that book. I read a better story one time about kids and how they think. It was about these child empaths who could communicate across vast distances with each other telepathically. He called this book Chrysalids, man, and this guy, he was a real dab hand. He thought like you'd opened up a brain cavity of some young individual and it was all pouring out right there on the page for you. I always tell people when they ask me, what's your favourite book? And I say to them, it's got to be John Wyndham, man because I never heard anybody else recommend this book to me so highly. So I figure that makes me special to recommend a book so a few people have heard about. Don't know if that's right. Maybe it's right, maybe it's not. Maybe it's like when I pretend to think I'm all clever but I'm not really. Or when I'm acting like I'm writing real dumb-like as though I'm just a kid, but I'm not and it's just an act. Who am I kidding? I've got to be kidding myself sometime because I won't have fun otherwise. You ever hear Oscar Wilde talk and you think to yourself, well, I can't really like this man because he was always doing things with teenage male prostitutes. But then you read something that he said and you can't help but think, my God, that's right. There's this quote that I like where he said something like, if you can be the life of the room at a London dinner party, you can do it anywhere. He went something like that. I don't fully recall the details, but if he said something different, then I think this one is nicer. That Oscar Wilde, even when you don't agree with him, you end up agreeing with him somehow. I always thought being real clever was kind of a silly thing to be. Being impressive, that's one thing. Everyone likes to be impressed by something. Being clever, that's something else. I've met real clever people, and they always try and make you feel silly somehow. I've met people so clever that they, you can't really understand what they're trying to say anyhow. It's kind of funny, isn't it? They've got all these smarts, and they don't even know how to make themselves understood anyhow. But you still get the sense that they don't really like you because you aren't as clever. Whenever I meet a real clever individual, I always wonder, 
what dirty secret has this person been tiptoeing around? Like, to get real smart, you've always got to be devising somehow. So you've got this thing, and it's on the tip of your tongue the entire time, but you don't want nobody to find out. You've got to get real devious to throw them off the scent. Real clever people. They always get real good at lying, because they were clever enough to do it, and I don't really get that, because I was never quite so clever. I always thought, it's way more clever just to be honest the entire time. If you're honest, and impressive at the same time, and somehow clever too, man, how brainy are you? I've got to hand it to people who are clever. They really know about other people somehow. Like, I tried telling a person how it really was one time. I said to a woman, I don't really like your taste in music, anyhow. I think you've got a horrible taste in fashion, and I'm kind of leery of people that meddle in other people's affairs. You know how I know I'm not that clever? I tried to be honest, and in the end, I think I should have just lied somehow. Maybe they'd like me better. It's, it's actresses, right? They've got real good at pretending. Pretending is just lying, which you do artfully. I'd always been real leery around an actress, because she'd make you believe something which never happened anyhow. But you really believed it did for a while, and it drove you crazy. I think of that guy Swan, in, in that big book that Marcel Proust wrote. And how he got obsessed with this one little actress. That little actress made that man feel so bad. But you couldn't really sympathise because he wasn't a nice man anyhow. He probably deserved it to go crazy like that. In the end, he married her. I didn't really like Marcel, the way he wrote, because I found it real depressing. Like, he would write about things and it would be so accurate that you felt sad about things and how they go on. How confusing it all gets. I tried to read the book after that, but I got lost in my antipathy towards it and gave up. You know what story I really like? Try and read the music of Eric Zahn sometime. You've got to read that story, man. Or maybe The Island of Dr. Moreau, if you have a more scientific mind. H.G. Wells, he was writing about science before science was even invented, which was really impressive for a man of his time to be writing about that. He would always think up real good titles for his stories, even if the book was quite bland. The Sleeper Awakes. Ooh, I bet you're excited to read that story now with an impressive sounding title like that. The five why word questions go as such. Why was that not what it was that I was thinking about? Why is this where I wasn't supposed to be anyhow? Why is there someone who, despite my not knowing, did that thing anyhow? Why is why such an awful question anyhow, and why do kids overuse it? Why do we make out how things are supposed to be when we don't really know anyhow? I read about this cat one time, Volteria was called, man. But it wasn't really called that, it was a pseudoplume. This cat, he really liked coffee, right? They said that this Voltaire cat, he was drinking coffee all the damn time, and it made him think better somehow. I don't know about that, because I drink a lot of coffee and I feel fidgety somehow, and kind of queer. I was reading about this Voltaire cat, and it said that him and his wife, they led a life of intellectual purity, and get this right, this Voltaire cat was responsible for making Isaac Newton dead famous like. I read some of his stories because I wanted to get smart like that. But maybe I wasn't drinking enough coffee because I didn't really get it. It's called satire, right? But it's not really funny. It's like funny and not all at the same time. I don't think you can invent a comedy which isn't supposed to be funny just because you can't do funny right. Where's the sense in that? They were always trying to murder this Voltaire cat because he kept saying things which people didn't like. But nobody could shut him up for two seconds because he kept drinking all that coffee and writing like mad. When you're reading something you wrote, maybe you're reading Micro Megas, and you don't really know what, what it's going on about. You just have to remind yourself that philosophy of that kind. Ain't nobody that understands that anyhow. So you're in the clear. Did you ever go clear? So I've been thinking about Dianetics, right? I'm not sure that I rightly get it, but you've got to think it's something quite impressive because you see all these famous people and they've all gotten into it. I mean, they were famous one time, although maybe you're not so sure that if they deserve it now, but they're still famous anyhow. They have this idea about going clear, where you lose the ability to be shamed for anything anyhow. Apparently this is a good thing to have because then you can do whatever and unless somebody takes a knife and stabs you, it's not really going to hurt you anyhow. That's a good thing to have, I think if you want to be in the public eye. Because you've got to figure out whatever you do, some crazy nutter is going to get it in their head to come and kill you. Like this John Lennon cat. Maybe he wasn't so hot on the guitar as everybody said he was, but he went around acting like that and eventually got murdered. 
You see famous people, and if they get too famous, they always get murdered somehow. Maybe it's not such a great thing never to be shamed into silence somehow. I really liked some of the things these cats did, but now you don't hear from them any longer. Because they aren't any longer around to make tell about it. It makes really, you really think about living in the public eye, and the sacrifices people make for that. Like, you've got your privacy right, so you're entitled to a little larking about, and nobody's going to get dead furious about it, unless they are your mum, or whatever. And you're making a dead racket through the carpet from upstairs. Sometimes, my aunt, she would come up all sneaky-like, and frighten the life out of you by th suddenly throwing the door open and shouting at us all, What do you lot think you're playing at? And we knew we were in trouble then, because you don't get that angry without having made some thunderous sound. I think of my old cat sometimes, and he ran away before the end. I was kind of glad that he did that, because I was such a friend of that cat, and he was getting kind of old, if I have to tell you the truth. He couldn't have much, lasted much longer, that cat. I didn't want to see him like that. And, uh, it felt like his home was elsewhere, because we kept moving around all the damn time. Well, I sometimes still think about him, and whether he's doing all right, even though I know he's not any longer. But that can't be helped. And I think about the good times instead, because it's always nicer to think about a friend you once had, and all the good things you once shared.